feel that virtue, that touch of God. Good to have Sister Becky and Parker with us in the house of the Lord. Welcome them. Any other guests? We appreciate being here. All right, and we want to uh, pray for Sister Elizabeth for healing special needs. Judith Mabry needs a touch of healing. Sister Judy needs a touch of healing, as well as Sister Evelyn. And a uh, special request for Dorothy Higgerson for healing and special need. Other requests by an uplift to your hand. God, thank you, Lord. We're just such a privileged people, and we're just so glad you've honored us to be able to approach you, God, to be able to draw close to you, to be able to reach out to you. The name of Jesus. Thank you for the work, God. Thank you for the mighty work. Thank you for the mighty power of God. Lord, you heal the sick. You strengthen the weak. You encourage the hearts, O oh Lord, of every needy soul. What a great God you are. Worthy of praise, worthy of exaltation. What mighty acts you perform, O oh God. Lord, we're just so grateful we can lift up your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Would you put your hands together in a great big praise? That is part of our praise. Our hands are a big part of our praise to the Lord. We found out so far. Amen. And uh, that's why we're here. We're here for one thing and one reason. Everybody said focus. 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 Wow, we could preach double tonight, right? Oh, yeah. Come on, Brother Spence. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord our God. Thank you, Lord. G chord. down on us Holy Spirit rain rain down on us Holy Spirit rain rain down on us Holy Spirit rain rain down on us like a mighty wind blow through this house open up the heavens pour your spirit out like a mighty wind blow through this house open up the heavens pour your spirit out rain down on us holy spirit rain rain down on us Holy Spirit, rain, rain down on us. Oh, like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens, pour your spirit out. Like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens, pour your spirit out. Like a raging fire, burning my soul. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Like a raging fire, burning my soul. Baptize me with the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, rain, rain down on us. 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 Like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens, pour your spirit out. Like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens, pour your spirit out. Like a rain. 
raging fire burning my soul baptize me with the holy ghost like a raging fire burning my soul baptize me with the holy ghost holy spirit rain rain down on us holy spirit rain rain down on us sometimes you got it sometimes you don't give us c chord Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord, every praise.
Hallelujah. Ah, uh, we do lift it high. Hallelujah. Woo! Put a zeal in it. Yeah, put a press in it. Whoso offereth praise glorifies the Lord. God, we want our praise to glorify you. God, we want our faith to honor you. Holy Ghost, we want our prayers to move you, Jesus. Be magnified, be glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, we thank you so much, God. God bless you as you prepare to give in our building fund tonight. This is a continued part of our worship, taught so by the word of the Lord, giving his worship. <laughs> you Jesus well if you don't find your joy in Jesus where are you gonna find it hallelujah thank God for lasting joy God bless you, you may be seated and uh, in case you're wondering hadn't heard where the evangelist is he's not here and uh, I think I scared him when I told him he had to prove all Featherstones weren't mean no he called and uh, uh, must have been Sunday night after church. And Brother Mixon had requested he stayed another week. And uh, so he called. He said, totally your decision. I said, oh, no, no. I evangelized for almost eight years. I know exactly how it is. And if Brother Mixon feels like and you feel like you're not through, I don't want you here. You get through there and then, uh, and then we'll be uh, ready to go. Because I'd want, I'd want it to be the same way if the shoe was on the other foot. So um, we're just, we are anxious to have Brother Jonathan Featherstone come. But uh, so we'll just keep waiting on God's timing. Hallelujah. And uh, glory. We're going to have a great week of church anyway. How many believe that? Oh, uh, yes. Somebody believes it. Well, Brother Perrett, testify. You look like you're just sitting on ready. Yes. Come on, Isaac. You folks that didn't hear him streaming, he done good. Sister Edna Faye testified. Bless I love the Lord. I thank God for truth. I thank God for my place in this spot and for God's keeping power, keeping us in this church and for what God's going to do. And I'm thankful for what I'm seeing in Ronnie and just the enthusiasm. I mean, he's 50, he's going to be 59 years old or 59 years old but or 58 but the enthusiasm that's in his heart for God. And he's just like, I'm ready for revival. You know, and I just I thought God, God's sending one and God's going to send more. And I just believe God for it. I was actually sitting here thinking, God, I hope he calls my name. I got something good. But uh, 
Um, today, I was at the house, and uh, I've been praying, but God help us find a way to mow our yards. The man that mows our yard has uh, had, an, had a, a surgery, and so he can't do it for a little while. And um, my neighbor, uh, she let us use her mow. She said, well, if we can figure it out, you know, and uh, the tire was flat, so I had to go get my mom's air pump and pump it up. And then she said, well, maybe you can find somebody that can help you. And uh, so I got my uncle over there to help me. Um, I figured out how to crank it, but couldn't figure out how to make the blade engage. And uh, so he got online and he Googled and uh, we did everything that it showed us to do. And uh, nothing worked. And, and God reminded me of that instant he was sitting on that mower about a time that he, he helped me with another um, truck or whatever I had prayed and asked God. I told him, I said, God, if you'll do this, I'll, I'll go turn the key if you make it work, you know. And, and he said, I'll do that. And so I told my uncle, I said, we can't figure this out. I said, but I can pray. And God can figure it out. I said, let me get on there. And so I sat on it and I said, God, we don't know what we're doing, but you do. And I turned it, and the exact same thing that we've been doing all this time, I did the exact same thing, and God made it work. And I just sit there and shout at my uncle, oh, said, yeah. it worked, you know. So the, but I think the, the most awesome thing is that my uncle got to see that what we tried doing on our own didn't work. But when we added God into the whole thing, you know, he, he made what we couldn't do possible. So Amen. anyway, I thank God for it. All right. Parker, testify. I'm thankful for second chances, and I'm thankful that I made it here safely tonight. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, yes. I was glad to be in Kelly when Parker got a tongue talking touch of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Amen. Brother Mark, testify. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I appreciate the Holy Ghost. I appreciate what God's doing. You know, I've just, I've been kind of heavy since Sister Sheila went on, you know, and it's just, you know, I would not bring her back for nothing. No. You know, and it's, it's heaven's gain is our loss, but I'm telling you, Brother Couch, we lost a warrior. Yes. You know, now, I'm not trying to focus on the battle, but this thing's a battle. You know, and, and the press, and the more people we have that press, you know, God made it that way. He made us come together in unity as a church body, a ch this local church family, and then the, the church family worldwide. You know, and we lost a real soldier. You know, I got to thinking on the way to church tonight, I said, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking about Sister Sheila and she's up in heaven. It's going to be no problem for God to say, here comes one of my faithful ones. Right. You know, God don't, don't have to make it up. Yeah. He's not going to make it up. You know, when he said you're tried and tested and you're faithful, it's going to be because you was faithful. Amen. That sister was faithful. Yes. You know, I might not have known her as good as some of these other folks know her, but I'm telling you, I watched her. She prayed, she worshiped, she loved God, she loved her man of God, and she was faithful till the end. Yeah. I appreciate the Holy Ghost. I hate to see her go. I hate to see Brother Sammy go and many other brothers and sisters in this house because of their fight, their press in them. You know, we, there's nothing like being around real soldiers of God. Amen. You know, I'm not saying they're, they're, they're serious all the time, but you know they got, that in, they got that focus. When it comes to prayer, they've got that focus. Yes. They know when it's time to get in the presence of God and, yeah. and when it's time to press a little harder and when it's time to push a little harder. I appreciate this. I tell you, I appreciate the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know, God put us together here. You know, and, and what God's going to do with us, none of us know. I still don't feel like we built this church for no reason. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel that way. Yes. Yeah. You know, you can say, well, that's faith or that's, I'm just telling you, God did not have you build this building this big Thank you, Jesus. for 200 folks. Praise I don't God. believe that. You know, I, I know it's not up to God to go out and win the lost. That's our job. Yeah. We're to witness. This church has witnessed for a lot of years. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, but there's some hungry folks out there that are empty. Absolutely. They're just as empty as I was. They may not be on skid row, but inside they're empty. This world will chew you up and spit you out. And there's folks, Brother Katz, they've got to be the world's full of folks that this world hadn't been good to. They promised them this and this, and they get into that rainbow, and it's not there. When God says it's time, yes. i got to believe that when it's yes. time. I don't know the preparation that God's putting us through. I don't understand everything. I can't explain it all. But I know when God's ready... 
He's going to fill this house up. God. We're going to have an end time revival like Praise we've heard about. God. You know, Thank I appreciate you. the Holy Ghost. I appreciate this church. Thank you, Jesus. you know, there's nothing like a good church family. Amen. You know, you may not, I said it the other night, I may not go to work with a lot of these folks. I, they may not mow my lawn. I may not go mow their lawn. We may not see each other at church. But when you really get an understanding of a real church family, they're pulling with you. Thank you're you. in that battle. You're not alone. Somebody's pulling with you. Amen. And you're helping them pull, and the fight's on, you know, and it's a commodity. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of them. Yeah. You know, you can feel that in the spirit. You know, when you get in prayer, and I'm talking about serious prayer here. I'm not talking about yeah. coming and playing a game. Yeah. You know, if you're going to come sit on these pews and play a game, you're wasting your time, and you're wasting God's time. But if you're going to walk in this house and you're going to pray, and you're going to learn to press when you don't feel like pressing, and when you're tired, and you're going to come in here and fight it anyway, you know, you're going to feel something. You're going to get yeah. to feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. God's faithful to the faithful. Amen. You know, I just appreciate the Holy Ghost. You know, I appreciate what God's doing in my life. You know, I feel like I've done some growing. This has been a little bit of a crazy year. It's been a crazy three years. You know, but I feel like God's put me up here in a different spot than I was three years ago. Absolutely. You know, we, we got some battles that went on, and we're standing on the other side of that battle now, and we're looking back, and we're seeing that battle. I don't mean the battle's gone, but we're looking at it from a different viewpoint. I'm telling you, Brother Couch, I appreciate God. Thank you, I Jesus. feel like he's fixing to work for us. Yes, yeah. sir different yeah. than what we've seen. I'm not, you know, I'm not just full of hype here. I feel like God's fixing to work for us. Right. Yeah. And it's going to be different than what we've seen. Thank you, God. I appreciate the Holy Ghost. I appreciate everyone here. All right. Sister Kellum, testify. Brother Couch, I appreciate the Lord. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. And I was thinking the last few days, it's not been long that, that um, I've been in church for 46 years and um, I thank God for truth and we've been here for 39 fixing to be 39 in June and I'm just thankful that that this church is the same when we came that there's truth here and that you preach the same and and I'm so thankful that we're still here thank and we're you. still feeling God and and, the, and I appreciate my church family even more now Last few days, I thought of Sister Sheila, and I thought, you know, she's been here a long time, too, and so faithful, yes. and I appreciate this church so much, and we don't always mingle and stuff, whatever, but I love and appreciate everybody and just thankful for truth. Praise God. Amen. Brother Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for my family. Thank you for the, my man of God. I, this is kind of past through. I should have said it a long time ago, but I want to thank God for those uh, families and men and young men that helped me when I was doing my roofing project. You know, I'm not a roofer. I'm not a laborer by any means, but I don't mind getting my hands dirty and working hard like a man. It's fine. But I uh, had a lot of help. Uh, Brother Robert helped me uh, some, and, and um, Brother Young, his boys, and, or his young men. Uh, Brother Andrews helped with his truck, and Brother Andrews' son, Brother Garrett, helped, and a lot of you folks stepped in. Uh, um, I'm just so thankful for those folks that helped me. Um, and I'm missing some names right now, and I'm thinking in my mind, but it's not coming out. But thank you, all of you who helped me. It wouldn't have been possible without you. And uh, let's make it. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Sister Madison. the Lord tonight and I'm just so thankful for another opportunity to be in his house and for my place in the church and I want to do all that I can for him. All right. <laughs> Brother Isaiah, testify. Thank the Lord what he's done for me. I want to do as well. All right. <laughs> oh, these young men do good, don't they? Thank God for our young folks. Let's thank God for our young folks, dedicated young men and young ladies. Well, I took my computer to the doctor today. That's all I can tell you. I don't know. We'll find out. 
Good to be in the house of the Lord. Let's stand together. I feel a wonderful touch of God. This has been a tremendous day. There are great things happening. Uh, continue to pray, uh, please, for Brother Lingo and his second son. He's got five sons. So this is his second son, I find out, that uh, has had this accident, had surgery. And uh, also there's extensive cost over there. And uh, God can some way help them take care of all that. But uh, the young man is still in need of prayer, I'm sure. And uh, it's a miracle that he's with us. And I know that mother and daddy, precious people, faithful to the cause of God. And you know, I heard Brother Mark say it. We've said it for years. God's faithful to the faithful. He's not going to let Brother Lingo go down. He is going to bless that faithful family. Amen. We're going to the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, we'll also step into 1 Thessalonians 5 and Hebrews 2. On a Tuesday night, I want to do one thing. As long as God has got a work to do for me, I want to grow in it. I want to accomplish it. And I want to be my best. I want my attitude to please him. I want my actions to please him. I want what I think to please him. I want what I say to please him. I want how I look to please him. Oh, yes. And when he's through, I want to get out of here. Hallelujah. And uh, that's what we're living for. And I say that excitedly. Uh, there's an old song that says, heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Lately. I've always got heaven on my mind, but uh, that's not exactly true. But I'm, I'm glad that uh, a lot of times there's great thoughts of heaven. It always ought not be too far in the back of our thoughts. That's, that's our goal. That's where we're going. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12, if you have it, say amen. amen. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. And he's talking about the resurrection as it were, but I follow after, if that I may, everybody said apprehend. The word straight from the Greek means to seize. For that which also I am apprehended, believe it or not, it means seized, of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, etc. I press toward the mark for the prize. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. First Thessalonians 5, 21. If you have it, say, read it. Prove all things. Hold fast. Everybody said that's a good grip. Everybody said that's a solid grip. That's a serious grip. Hold fast to that which is good. Now, we're going to find out. God's told us this in the Scripture, but... Uh, if you really hold on to the right things, you're going to have to let go of the wrong things. You can't, you can't juggle with good and bad when it comes to living for God. Hebrews chapter 2, first verse. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, for the reasons stated in chapter 1, but therefore, we ought to to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Don't lose your grip. Father, we love you. Thank you for every child of God. Lord, thank you for the church. 
Thank you for the unity and the harmony we enjoy with your praying people, dedicated people, truth-loving people, honest-hearted people, Lord Jesus, striving and reaching people. Thank you for meeting with us already here tonight, the presence of healing that was in the forefront of this service from prayer till now. God, I thank you for meeting the needs and accomplishing your purpose. We're looking for the testimonies, always, God, of the great God that you are. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. Be seated, please. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. One rendition says, therefore, listen to it, listen to it, therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard. I'm going to tell you something. You listen to me. There's a bunch of folks in a mess right now that wouldn't be in a mess. And it's sad if they'd have just listened. If they'd have just paid a lot closer attention. To the things that they needed to hear. Lest we drift away from it. Earnest from the Greek means more superabundantly, more frequently. Heed means to hold to mind, to pay attention to, to be cautious about, listen to me, to apply oneself to, to adhere to. It's translated another place in your Bible like this, to give attendance to. What Paul say to Timothy, until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. Now, I said Paul wrote that, and he did, but we understand it as, to Timothy, but we understand it as the word of the Lord to us. We must be attentive. That goes with Hebrews 10, 25. We might get there tonight, 23 really and down. But, uh, and then the word slip. It means to flow by, to carelessly Pass to drift, lest we drift away from it. So all through the Word of God, all through Scripture, there's exhortation after exhortation of one important thing. Paul said this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth. What was he saying? He said, I, I am seizing something out here. And it's something that got a hold of me. When the Holy Ghost gets a hold of us, we need to get a hold of the Holy Ghost. And when we get a hold of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you something. Not maybe so, not could be. The Holy Ghost gets a hold of us. Holy Ghost experience, depth of God, uh, a real prayer life, uh, a powerhouse walk with God. God didn't choose 10% of folks that he calls for that. God didn't choose a fragment of folks that he calls for that. He chose every one of us uh, and said, just reach out there and get a hold of it uh, like you need to get a hold of it, uh, like you desire to get a hold of it. So exhortation after exhortation. Romans 12 verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Everybody said, don't be a hypocrite. Be real. Let it be real love, not hypocritical love. Abhor that which is evil. Man, that, that word abhor, that's, that's, that's not just don't care that much for it. That's really let it disgust you. I mean puke and disgust. I mean just when you abhor something, you absolutely hate that thing. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that 
which is good. Now, this is a good way to measure it. If it hinders your walk with God, hate it. If it keeps you from growing in the Spirit, hate it. If it makes you less than what you know God wants you to be, uh, hate it. If it helps you get close, uh, hold on to it. Uh, if it helps you love God, uh, get a bulldog, uh, tenacious uh, grip uh, on that thing uh, and be determined we will not let that go. Whatever's good for your walk with God, uh, whatever's good for your faith, uh, whatever's good for your spiritual growth, uh, whatever is good uh, to help you along to heaven, uh, get a grip on it uh, and don't ever, I said don't ever, don't ever, don't ever, don't ever let go. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Woo. It's all right to wake up on a Tuesday night. I, Psalm 101, verse 3, David said, Psalmist said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. You reckon he learned his lesson? I hate the work of them that turn aside. You reckon he learned his lesson? We all know about David, the psalmist's falterings. Woo. I'm going to tell you how I feel about it now. That day when kings went to battle and I stayed home, I hate the work of them that set aside. Woo, hallelujah. What one fellow say, never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. He kind of had that backwards, right? Most especially when it comes to God. Redeeming the time, redeeming the opportunity. If there's a spiritual opportunity, don't wait till tomorrow. If, if there's a spiritual opportunity, don't drag uh, your feet. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I'm going to set no wicked thing. I learned my lesson before my eyes. I'm going to learn how to turn my head, focus in the right direction. Uh, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to be slack. Uh, it shall not cleave to me. So I've already told you, but it'll bear telling again. If you're going to get the grip, that you really need, uh, that God really said, uh, that God really spoke, uh, we should have in our experience uh, and in our walk with God, uh, there's some things don't belong in that hand. There's some things that are only a hindrance. Uh, let them go. Give them away. Do something by throwing them away. It shall not cleave uh, to me. Uh, when doubt comes, uh, shake the devil off. Uh, when unbelief wants to hang around, uh, shake the devil off. Uh, when distractions come, when temptations uh, come, uh, when they want you to let down, uh, when they want you to let up, uh, when they want you to give up, uh, shake the devil off, throw it aside. Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. So the scripture is just, it's just so full, Acts 240, of a job that we've got to do. Acts 2.40, save yourself. Acts 15.29, 1 John 5.2, keep yourself from idols. Jude verse 21, keep yourself in the love of God. 2 John verse 8, just one chapter, so that's why we're only calling the verse. It said, look to yourselves. That we lose not, let them slip, let them go, the things uh, which we have wrought, uh, but that we receive uh, a full reward. Somebody needs to hear me tell you, there is a danger, a great danger uh, of divided attention. People aren't thinking like they ought to think anymore. Do you understand uh, that Christianity just the profession of Christianity is at an all-time low in America. I've said this. I'm going to say it again. This is my opinion, but I believe it. America is now a nation with some Christians, but it's not a Christian nation. It hurts me to say that. But I'm just telling you, there is still a promise. If my people, yeah. 
Now, when God said, my people, it don't matter if it's a thousand, ten thousand, or two. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, uh, I concur with our newest convert. Let's have revival. Let's have old time revival. Let's have Bible revival. Uh, let's have uh, heaven sent, uh, heaven rewarded, uh, heaven ordained, uh, heaven strengthened. Uh, revival! Uh, let's have revival! Praise God. People aren't thinking the same. At church attendance, I heard the stats today. Bill O'Reilly gave the, the stats today. All time low. Church attendance. And uh, when they're talking about that, they're talking about synagogues and Catholic uh, houses and so on and so forth. But uh, sad, but true. But I'm going to say it one more time because I'm trying to drive it home. There is a great danger of divided attention. People aren't thinking right. People aren't thinking same. Oh, they're talking religious, but they got God way down here. They don't have him where he belongs in their lives. They're talking religious. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like at a while, after a while, folks would get angry at their self. They would get... Uh, uh, Concerned about their self and making excuses and excuses and excuses. Excuse me, God. Excuse me, God. Excuse me, God. We talked about that, that uh, healing that Naaman got. And uh, he become converted. He believed in the God of Israel. I mean, he'd been stupid if he hadn't. Dying a leper. Goes to the man of God. The man of God tells him what to do. There's a miracle that takes place and so on. And he's, he's going to take some Israel soil back. It's, it's going to remind him of God. And he said, uh, you know, when, when my master goes into the idol temple to worship Syria's God, that's what Naaman was. He was a Syrian. And uh, I'm going to put this down here. And uh, that's not going to be my focus. But he said, excuse me. Pardon thy servant while I do this. Well, you know, there comes a time. May maybe Naaman was trying to do the best he could and figure out the best he could. But I'm going to tell you, God will never change his attitude about idolatry. And, and it doesn't have to be a statue of Mother Mary. That's an idol. Or St. Peter. That's an idol. And if you pray to St. Peter or Mother Mary, that's idolatry. Yes. Oh, yes. But what, whatever it is that begins to take the place of the importance of God in our life and the place of God in our spiritual lives, it don't matter what it is, call it an idol. You can make an idol out of anything. When it begins to divide our attention, when it begins to distract us, uh, that we're in the end time. Come on. Ooh, hallelujah. Money's got its place, but it don't have its place before God. Things have their place, but they don't have their place before God. I'm going to say it one more time. There is a great danger of divided attention. I, I wish folks would get tired uh, of telling God why I'm not going to pray like I need to pray today. Why I'm not going to fast like I need to fast today. Why I'm not going to call out on him because I'm going to tell you one of these days uh, there's not a soul uh, that's not going to wish uh, they had uh, or there's not a soul uh, that's not going to be glad uh, they did. Uh, get a hold of this truth. Uh, get a hold of this walk with God. Uh, get a hold of this relationship with God. Uh, and never, 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 never let it go. Let me tell you the danger. Luke 9, 62, Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. When your footsteps are at variance with your thoughts, when you're walking right but you're looking wrong, you're in trouble. When your direction's right uh, but your thoughts are wrong, 
Because eventually, as that man thinketh in his heart, uh, so uh, is he. Uh, we must put truth uh, into practice uh, or we lose it. I'm telling you, there's folks that used to think right uh, about truth uh, and they can't think right about it no more. Uh, they don't have the ability to think right uh, about it anymore. Uh, we must put truth into practice. Or we lose truth. There's convictions. I've talked to God about it lately that I got from God. God smote my heart about some things. 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. Hallelujah. Somebody's telling me the other day, the founder said, You know, brother so and so said, Yeah. He's uh, somewhere in his 40s now, probably. And said, You know, you ever heard that God convicted him of a wristwatch when he was just a real young man and he's never put one on since? That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that God can say, hey, let this be about our walk together. Let this be about our relationship together. Let this be about our fellowship together. Get a grip. You got to get a grip on self. You got to get a grip on your mind. You got to get a grip on God. Uh, you got to get a grip on whatever situation uh, would distract you from God uh, and put everything in its right order and everything in its right place. Uh, I don't think anybody would argue with me that there's never been to us, such a time as this. Now, folks that are just uh, their biggest memories, young people, their biggest memories are times like this. They don't think as much about it. That's why the Bible said there's something we got to pass on to the next generation. Ooh. Elijah's mantle needs to fall on Elisha. There's some things we need to pass on to the next uh, generation. We don't want them thinking like this generation is molding them to think. It's never been so perverted. I'm telling you, you don't have to go very many decades back there. You talk about transgender. Most men in the world would have said, what in God's name are you talking about? And when you described it to them, they'd say, you have got to be kidding. That's the stupidest thing. That's the dumbest thing. That's the ignorantest thing. A man wanting to be a woman and a woman wanting to be a man. Woo. But I'm telling you the process of sin and the process of time. There's never been such a time as this. And, and is it so that the scripture describes this? What did Jesus say in Matthew 24? I said, we want you to tell us, Lord, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of that coming into the end of the world? And uh, he's in here telling them about it. He said, there's going to come a time that there's going to be great tribulation such as never was. From the foundation of the world, since the beginning of the world, to this time, no nor ever shall be. Everybody said it's just going to be the worst. It's going to be the worst of the worst. And except those days should be shortened. You're talking to God about it? This world's not my home. There should be no flesh saved uh, but for the elect's sake. Thank God for the elect. Thank God for the focused. Thank God for the Holy Ghost field. Thank God for Bible believers. Uh, thank God for apostolic livers uh, and apostolic doctrine. They continued steadfastly uh, in the apostles' doctrine. Thank God for it. For the elect's sake, uh, those days shall be shortened. Uh, I want somebody to hear me tonight. We were birthed. Uh, we were birthed uh, for such a time uh, as this. Uh, we were brought into our generation. Uh, just as sure as Esther uh, had a thing to do, uh, we got something to do for God. Uh, we were born again. Uh, we were rebirthed uh, into the church uh, for such a time uh, as this. Nobody else, nobody else's prayers, uh, nobody else's faith, uh, nobody else's belief, uh, nobody else's, uh, I'm talking about us. Uh, church, I'm talking about us. Uh, do I have any takers? Do I have any grippers? Do I have any said, hey, I'm going to focus me. Our 
testimony, our prayers, uh, our fight, uh, our service, uh, our dedication, uh, our light, uh, our example uh, for such a time uh, as this. You can be seated. I'm going to read you a few more. Luke 21, 34. Luke 21 is the like part of Matthew 24. Uh, same question, answers coming up. Luke just gives us a, uh, a, a look from a different veranda, but uh, all the same truth coming from the lips of Jesus Christ. 21, 34, take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time, Hebrews said, lest any of you, whoo, any of you, let bitterness get a hold of you, let bad things get a hold of you, get a grip on some things you don't need to be gripping on. But Hebrews said, any of you. And then Jesus said, at any time, putting that together, any of you, at any time. You know, it's good when we think about shouting down the street of gold, worshiping around that sea of glass, praising God under that tree of life. No sun. Woo, hallelujah. But the lamb is the light. It's good that we think about those things. No sorrow, no pain, no hurting, no dying. Oh, yeah, that's where we're headed, Sister Mabry. That's what we're holding on for. Praise God. But, you know, it might not be too bad. God did something when I started my trek in seeking God. God did something for me. He, he, he gave me a reality of hell. He showed me hell, and I decided I didn't want to go there. And I didn't want a preacher deceiving me about going there. And when the preacher said, Michael, you're saved... I didn't mind saying, but I don't feel saved. I don't want to go to hell. I believe in it. Maybe it wouldn't hurt if every now and then we gave a little thought about the possibility of our eternal souls being in a devil's hell, listening to the screams and the agony, falling over and over in a lake of fire where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, uh, where there's one way in uh, and there's never a way out uh, and there's never an end to it. Uh, maybe it wouldn't hurt uh, if we could get a little picture. Uh, if I don't do it right, uh, if I don't keep a grip, uh, if I don't hold on strong uh, if I'm playing a game uh, if I'm playing church uh, if I'm not willing to give up uh, and I'm not willing to take in uh, God help my never dying soul uh, because it will find itself in hell take heed any of you at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting what's, what's he talking about talking about you're distracted yes. you're distracted I don't know much anybody that don't like eating oh I've met a few folks that had some ailments and situations that hindered brother Chandler went through a terrible season ordeal in his life before his passing but uh, most folks I know they like to eat well somebody said amen don't get, don't be scared and drunkenness. It really gives the connotation here of drunken on the cares of this life. It's not, not just, just overcome by some kind of stupid alcoholic beverage that we got no business holding on to. But if you get distracted, if you get misfocused, if you get intoxicated with the things of life until you lose sight of the most important and so that day come upon you unawares what's it mean unawares you're not ready you're not focused you're not what you need to be i'm telling you neglect is fatal
and neglect uh, can become final. But that's the reason I'm preaching tonight. Uh, it really doesn't have to be that way. We are living in the generation of the warning. Uh, iniquity abounds uh, and the love of many waxes cold. Now, there's two things. Have you ever really loved God uh, like you need to love God? That needs to be answered. Number two, do you still love God as much and more than you've always uh, loved God? Uh, where's his preeminence in your life? Uh, because iniquity shall abound, uh, a sign of the end time, Jesus said. Uh, it's going to be like this. Uh, they're not going to love me. Uh, they're not going to be able to love me. They're not going to be able to love one another uh, because uh, there is distractions of sin and wrong. Everyone who will hold to sin will lose a love for God. I'm talking about any sin. Sinning and loving God don't exist together. You can't find it any way like that in this Bible. Are you still with me? We're here. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. I don't want it to be me. Hold to your faith. Hold to doctrine. Hold to your belief. Get it in your heart. Don't you allow the enemy to confuse you. There are deceptive spirits. Uh, beware. Uh, don't let any man deceive you. Don't let any devil deceive you. Giving heed uh, to seducing spirits uh, and doctrines of devils. Uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their conscience seared uh, with a hot iron. Uh, I'm screaming it. Uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm reaching out to you. Uh, I'm asking you. I'm imploring you. Uh, I'm beseeching you. Uh, get a hold of your conscience. Uh, get a hold of a pure conscience. Uh, don't let it be defiled. Uh, don't let yourself be deceived. If you've got convictions, get them out. <laughs> get them out. Brother Vaughn was still here, still alive. That black brother be sweating down preaching, grinning that big grin on that black face, hallelujah, and saying, you need to get it out. Man, if I could physically get a hold of my Holy Ghost. He said, I'd every day, I'd say, thank you, Jesus. And I'd shine it up. And I'd shine it up. That's what we need to do. We need to pay attention to our convictions. Oh, I want to keep them like they are. Hallelujah. I don't want it to get slack. There's demonic forces at work. There's deceptive men at work. There are perilous things at work. And they're after our conviction. And they're after our dedication. And they're after our walk with God. Uh, somebody here, have you already given up uh, your walk, your daily walk in prayer? Uh, have you already given up some convictions uh, and things that used to bother you uh, don't bother you anymore? Uh, just a little bit here uh, and a little bit there. Uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Don't let it happen. Get a grip on those truths. Get a grip on those great things. Perilous times shall come. Lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, etc. Well, it don't matter how bad the times is. They're not perilous for the church until they're sinful for the church. We can handle the pandemics. We can handle the oppositions that's out there. Uh, we just got to keep it straight right here. We just got to keep it right, uh, right here. Hallelujah. We got everything to praise God for and nothing to complain about. People have more and complain and murmur more. Never satisfied. That's not the people of God. Are you with me? Woo, hallelujah. Jesus said that would, there would be conflict. It would be child against parent, parent against child, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Now, that's not the order of the church. That'll never be the order of the church. But I'm just going to tell you, you need to decide what side you're on. 
You need to decide uh, who you're going to stand for, uh, what you're going to stand for. He said, don't think that I come to bring peace. Uh, I came to bring a sword. I came to bring fire. I came to bring division. Uh, I'm on your side, God. Uh, and whatever that separates me from, uh, whatever that takes me out of, uh, whoever that makes hate me, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'll stand for Jesus uh, and let the world go by. Uh, I'll claim his promise. Uh, my Lord and I. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To the preacher, he said, hold up your head, man of God. Listen to me. First Timothy 4, 16, you know it. Take heed to yourself. Hallelujah. Moses needed to know that. Elijah needed to know that. For various reasons. Take heed to yourself. Every New Testament apostolic preacher that loves this one God apostolic truth with holiness needs to know this. Take heed to yourself. Watch yourself, sir. Watch yourself, sir. And then take heed to the doctrine. Stay right in line. Stay really close. To do that, you're going to have to watch what you fellowship. People struggling in their minds because they just can't draw the lines they need to draw. This is what the Bible said, and the Bible said it for a reason. And we were in the barber shop today. I don't ever go in the barber shop. That's always, hey Rev, how you doing? And blah blah blah. And it's always uh, religious. And I love it. And I love it because somewhere, somehow, there's an open door of opportunity. Amen. You know, it's it's pretty good when you, somebody that's uh, supposed to be Baptist, but they they started talking a long time ago. Uh, you know, I've told them. I said. Well, if you believe that, you're not a Trinitarian. They said, well, I'm, then I'm not because that's what I believe. I believe God the Father and Jesus Christ are the same. God the Father robed in the flesh. That's exactly what I believe. I said, well, thank God. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah, that's a great step in the right direction. And talking about, I just, I just believe if it's in the Bible, I just believe it like the Bible said. The unrighteous ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. So this once saved, always saved, that don't float with you? Once saved, live any way you want to and go to heaven anyway. That don't flow. I just believe it like the Bible said. And if the Bible said it, uh, it's just like that. If you don't, in fact, he quoted it today. Said if, if, you, uh, if, if you sin and say you love God, you're a liar and the truth's not in you. That's right. Woo! Preach on. Hallelujah. Well, how many love the word? I mean, love the word. Take heed to yourself. Take heed to the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, uh, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You hear what he said, preacher? Get a grip. Uh, get a bulldog tenacity. Uh, get a hold of it. Uh, and hold it stronger. Uh, hold it harder. Uh, be a better example. Uh, live it out. Hey, it's good what's said up here. Uh, it's better what's lived out there. I'm going to be excited here, and I'm going to be excited out here. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth here, uh, and God help me to my dying day. I'm going to live the example of it uh, to the best of my ability out here. Well, clap your hands, all you people. Saints of God, get a grip. I speak in fear. There's some weak hands, and there's some folks that's got such a feeble grip that overnight you can wake up and wonder where to go. Where's my first love? Where's my convictions? Where's my zeal for God? Where's my love for apostolic truth? What happened? I'm, I'm not telling you something I'm thinking. I'm telling you something I've seen again and again and again, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, once more, I shake not the earth only, but also the heaven. And in this word, once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaken. If it, if it can be shaken, it will be shaken. Oh, if it don't hang in here, 
if it doesn't have a grip, if the roots aren't deep enough. When the wind blows through, it's not going to stay. That only the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we, that's us, church, we, that's the apostolic people of God, we who believe in one God, who are baptized in that one God's name, the only saving name, who are filled with the spirit of that one God, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be Mood, uh, let us have grace uh, whereby we may serve God acceptably uh, with reverence uh, and godly fear. Uh, what did he say? Get a grip! Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yes. Now, I'm not in the negative. Woo. We just let one go, we just saw one go. And I, I concur with Brother Mark. I wouldn't bring her back. I wouldn't bring her back. I wouldn't bring her back. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we can rejoice in that. I feel the bittersweet feelings. You don't pastor somebody's smile and face for 30 whatever years. Hallelujah. And not feel that bittersweet feeling. But I'm going to tell you how I feel. I take it right to the devil's face and say, devil, what you going to do about it now? What you going to do? I'm going to stand before God one day, and I'm going to tell you, devil, what I'm going to tell God about that sister. Uh, and there's not a thing uh, you can do about it. Uh, live for God when family wouldn't. Uh, serve God when friends wouldn't. Uh, hung in there. Uh, oh, yeah, there might have been some stumblings, uh, but I'm going to tell you, uh, when you get back up, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, focused on direction. Uh, focused on loving God. Uh, focused on living for God. There's an army out there, and there's only one sword. I don't care what kind of education you got. I'm not mocking your education necessarily. I don't care what kind of degree you got. I'm not mocking your degree. I got a couple of them myself. But there's only one sword that defeats the enemies of this end time and this war. Hallelujah. Philistines, which have long represented the enemies of the church, came to Israel. And David had a great general. He did have some mighty men, and this was one of them. He had a great general. That when his troops retreated because of the battle, when the cowards fled because of the battle, don't be surprised. God always weeds out. Ask Gideon, the pretenders, the unbelievers, the fearful, the distracted. God always, oh uh, yeah. So when we're watching the cowards flee, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your intensity. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> oh yes. And Eliezer walked into battle. And if I'm understanding right, he had some comrades with him. But he walked into battle. And it wouldn't have mattered by yourself or with somebody. And he cleaned house. I can see the Philistines now saying, we got them. We got them again. We're going to get them again this time. We got them. And they went to pressing. But the only problem was there was a set defense that was standing the ground. 
that had a sword in hand uh, that was swinging it for everything he was worth uh, and swinging it for the name of his God. Uh, and Eliezer wasn't fighting by himself. Uh, he had commanded the host of heaven's uh, attention. Uh, he had commanded his great God's uh, attention. Uh, fight for right uh, and you'll never fight alone. Uh, stand for right uh, and you'll never stand alone. Uh, at my first answer, Paul said, uh, no man stood with me, uh, but nevertheless, uh, God uh, stood with me. Uh, just keep on fighting. Uh, you'll never be by yourself uh, as long as you're fighting for God. And they begin to fall. The Philistines begin to fall until they were stacking up around him. They were tripping over each other trying to get to him. And he was just holding that place and swinging that sword and ducking and dodging. You talk about focus, that's time to be focused. That's the kind of fight we're in, church. That's the kind of fight we're seeing through this end time. Don't let yourself get distracted. You'll go down. And it happened, I don't know how many hours. I don't know how long. That, that wasn't a little army. But then again, God had already proved to his people more than once that he could take a little bitty few and whoop a whole great many. Nothing for God. All he wants is a surrendered vessel. Can you hear it? Imagine what it sounded like to Eliezer's ears when he heard a rough voice say, Fall back! I know what that means. Wasn't this general saying it? Well, that was a Philistine's voice. That was a Philistine language. Fall back! Woo! That was from the commander of the Philistines. What we're losing here. Something ain't right here. Something's messed up with this thing. Something's not being calculated right. Fall and it was caught by somebody in the ranks back here uh, and they hollered it fall back and it was caught by somebody back here uh, and they said fall back and it wasn't long uh, until there stood Eliezer uh, all by himself uh, where did they go uh, it doesn't matter uh, they just gotta go uh, we're the victors uh, and they're the loser uh, we're more than conquerors uh, and they're the defeated Cowards have no problem dropping their swords. Ooh. But fighters, Ooh. Philistines that were gathered together to battle. Eliezer defied these Philistines in battle. The men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary. I know I'm talking to you. It's okay to be weary. It's not okay to quit fighting. <laughs> Consider him. Face such contradiction of sinners, that's Jesus. Lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. I'm telling you, sir, listen to me. If you got an ear to hear a voice from God, it's not time to keep dragging in. It's not, it's not back row time. It's not fall back for the church time. Uh, we've seen our times of patiently waiting on God. I've heard that voice too. But I'm just telling you what time we're in. You heard it testified about tonight. This wasn't discussed with anybody. The Bible said, until his hand was weary. Whew. All right. They're gone, Eliezer. You can put it down now. But the problem is I can't. I can't. When you're that dedicated to it. 
when it's that real to you. His hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. Well, that's all right. Oh, yes. I just want to stay in the fight. I just want to hang in there. Can I get a witness? Now, you listen to me. I'm getting right close. Sister Sanjay, come help me. There's a people that are satisfied with part truth. The battle that I'm preaching about, part truth, don't get it. Folks that have part truth only have part grip. And part grip. Don't get it. Go back to our text. It's a fair encouragement from God. Just fight on. Folks with part truth, part dedication, part surrender, will have the sword wrenched from their hand. Be wide open for defeat in battle. Oh, yes. I'm hearing saints praying. Give me a tighter grip, God. I'm hearing preachers saying it and praying it. I want a tighter grip God I've told you before listen to me out there in streaming land I've told you before you take this sword and you be sure that you place your thumb somewhere on Genesis and you wrap that hand till it reaches around to Revelation because we can't live without one word of it we're not going to do without one simple thing that's in it. Uh, we want it all. Man shall not live by bread alone, uh, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You grip it from Genesis to Revelations. And you fight. And you fight. And you fight. Let's stand together in Jesus' name. Somebody hear me. We feel those that are trying. They're trying. They're trying. Come here, Brother Garrett. Had a pastor call me today, say, you got a, a real young preacher in your church? I said, well, he's not 20 yet. Is that young enough? He said, that's what I need. Hallelujah. And I said, well, i just tell you what. We got one that'll preach like the devil for Jesus. That's your Bible. You got a hold on it. And you're going to keep a hold on it. But I'm promising you, this is so serious. That's wonderful faith in your heart. That's the real deal. And there's an enemy that will do anything to wrench that out of your hand. That faith, that trust in God, that love for holiness, that love for sanctification, that love for separation. He's after it. And he's, he'll do anything. And he's got no scruples. He's got no morals. And he'll do anything. Don't. You hear it, young men? You hear it? Get your Bibles. Get a hold of it. Don't get a grip on it. I'm talking about a grip on it. Because that enemy, he means business. He means business. And he wants it. And it'll happen that fast. Don't. Don't take for granted. You can't lose this word. You can lose it. You can lose it. Saint of God, you can lose it. And we're in the end. We're in the last mile. Thank you, Brother Karen. You can stay there because the rest of them is going to come. You want to bring a Bible? Somebody said, we've done that before. We'll do it a hundred more times before Jesus comes, if that's what it takes. He's after your prayer. He's going to wrench it out of your hand. He's after your fasting. I heard the testimony today. 
I got the text from Sister Edna said, Ronnie was just ecstatic. He had his first fast day with the church. How long has it been since you felt like that? I get to fast with the church. I get to fast with hungry folks. Excuse the pun. I get to fast with loyal folks. I get to fast with dedicated folks. I get to be one. How about a revelation of the oneness of the body with the church? And he was, yeah, and I, he told me Sunday night, he said, man, I want, I, I want old time revival. And I'm thinking, hadn't been in church since he was 17. Getting ready to turn 59 years old, I think he told me. And, uh, hmm. What does he know about old time revival? Ooh, I don't know. I've questioned different folks. What do you remember most? You know, you ever remembered something as a child and went back there after you got grown years and years and years later, looked at it? So I thought it was bigger than that. I thought it was different. You know, things look a little bit different. I said, what do you remember as a child about church? One fellow said, I remember all the gum underneath the pew. Said some of it still was juicy, had a little sweet in it. I did hear that. Uh, we live in a day when so many men and so many women believe nothing and they will not endure sound doctrine. But let me tell you something. In some of the final testimonies of Hebrews 11, it said these all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were assured of them and embraced the promises. You got it? Pull it close. Pull it tight. Hold it tight. Begin to talk to God about it. I want it right here, Lord. I want it right here, God. Deuteronomy 4, 4, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, to this day. We made it. We made it. We made it. Who, when he came, had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave that was apostolic encouragement. Job said it like this, my righteousness, I hold fast. I will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. I'm not even going to let me send me to hell. How about revelation? But that which you have already, hold fast. Fast, fast, till I come. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. The writer of Hebrews, hold fast the confidence. Again, Hebrews, uh, let us draw near uh, with a true heart, full assurance of faith, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise somebody ought to be talking to God about your prayer life right now about your convictions right now oh I want them sensitive I want them as sensitive as they've ever been God I'm going to hold fast to God I'm going to hold fast to righteousness I'm going to hold fast to what I already have I'm going to hold fast to my confidence hold fast to my rejoicing hold fast to sound words hold fast to faith hold fast to my profession if you don't hold fast truth can become elusive and drifting let us take heed to the things that we have heard lest at any time we should let them slip hold fast talk to him right now Jesus thank you Lord well I'm gonna keep on fighting till he comes till he comes there's nothing in this world we're turning around
That's the unshakable. Oh, I'm gonna keep on. That's the unmovable. Reach over and pray for your brother. Reach over and pray for your sister. God, make us one every day. Unify us. Unify your church. Unify your people. Oh, unify us here, God. Unify us in the Philippines, God. Unify us around this world. God, those that you've chosen, those that you've ordained, those that you prepared for the darkest hour, the darkest nights just before the dawn, the hardest fight is just to keep holding on. Thank you for the promise, Lord. Thank you for the word. Thank you for your great and wonderful truths in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, you're blessing our brothers, you're blessing our sisters. You're blessing the unity and the harmony, God. It's your choice, and you're going to have it your way, God. Oh, yes, and I thank you for it. And all the church said amen. Well, we love you. They're going to put our announcements on the screens. I felt the healer in the house. When you come back healed, be sure and testify of the mighty healer that God is. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. We got set up in a different route because just before church, we didn't have internet connection. I think we ended up having that. But Good job, Brother Scott. Man, he stayed with it and didn't give up. And look there, victory. So looks a little busy there, and that's good. We like that. A funeral cook team. Man, what a great team. Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name.